Hello, my name is uh, Antti Pulkkinen and I work at the uh, Catholic University of America and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center's Space Weather Laboratory. And the purpose of this tutorial is to discuss briefly two uh, different concepts, Thomson scattering and, and uh, chronograph uh, instrumentation uh, and their relation to the analysis of uh, coronal mass ejections or CMEs that you can see in the imagery uh, like this one here. Uh, this is a snapshot image taken by Lasco C3 chronograph which is on board Solar and Heliospheric Observatory located at Lagrange 1 point. This picture is taken uh, September 22nd 2011. So the purpose of this uh, tutorial is to uh, introduce you to some basic concepts that help in uh, uh, interpretation, in interpretation and, and understanding of the, the imagery generated by this type of chronograph instruments. Let's start by um, uh, first drawing a, a simple schematic illustration of the situation that is uh, of our primary interest in in this tutorial. Um, Let's make a first one circle here, which now will represent us, uh, the sun. It's uh, labeled here, sun. And then we'll draw another blob here. And uh, that blob will then represent the uh, coronal mass ejection uh, in this tutorial. Let's make it uh, blue. Um, and uh, let's uh, label this thing here too as uh, CME. Right now. And now what is important to understand, uh, for example, in the context of Thomson scattering, is that these uh, coronal mass ejections are a collection of charged particles uh, that we will indicate here with uh, pluses, uh, which indicate uh, ions and also we have uh, electrons within these clouds which are indicated here by these minus signs and because the plasma is uh, quasi-neutral it means that there's a, a approximately equal number of uh, uh, positively charged ions and electrons contained uh, within this volume now, uh, <clears throat> from the viewpoint of uh, uh, analysis of these coronal mass ejections, what is important is that there is uh, incident light coming uh, from uh, the solar surface, from the solar uh, photosphere, and that incident light then hits this collection of charged particles contained by the coronal mass ejection. And that incident light is then scattered uh, by uh, the cloud uh, to various directions <coughs> indicated by by these arrows here and the process that creates this scattered light is called uh, Thomson scattering so we have coming light in and then it's scattered uh, from these charged particles contained by this cloud so let's then review quickly uh, the sort of the physical principle behind uh, the Thomson scattering that uh, causes this uh, incident photospheric light to scatter from these coronal mass ejections. So let's draw here uh, uh, an electron and let's give it a, some color for it too. Um, like that and let's indicate the uh, negative charge uh, uh, of the electron and now we'll assume that we will have incident electromagnetic radiation, incident uh, light coming from here, uh, let's erase it. Uh, from this direction towards uh, the uh, electron. And now what happens here is that this incident electromagnetic radiation causes this electron to start to oscillate. And the oscillation is now indicated by these lines here. So the electron starts to oscillate uh, 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 because of, of this incident electronic radiation coming from here. Let's indicate as an incident line. Incident, oops, incident line. Here we go. 
And what uh, happens when the electron starts to oscillate, it will generate uh, uh, secondary uh, electromagnetic radiation uh, emitted by the electron. And, and, uh, and that secondary light is then yeah, the scattered light that comes out uh, from this electron. So let's call this scattered light. So, in Thomson scattering, um, uh, uh, really simply speaking, what happens is that you have electromagnetic radiation uh, uh, hitting the electron, and that causes the electron to oscillate, and that oscillation generates uh, electromagnetic radiation, which is then uh, uh, interpreted as a scattered electromagnetic radiation uh, coming uh, from this electron. Okay? There's actually a really nice uh, short uh, Wikipedia article on Thomson scattering. That's Thomson scattering. If you Google Thomson scattering and then and take the first link that you get, you will get uh, much more detailed, uh, quite a bit more detailed discussion about the various aspects of, of Thomson scattering. Now, uh, from uh, if you want to start to analyze this thing more in detail, what is also important to understand is that uh, 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 in this picture, the amount of the scattered light is is actually uh, for certain uh, polarizations. Uh, so if uh, if we call this angle between the incident and scattered light uh, g, uh, uh, the, the amount of scattered light is is a, is a, a function of this angle g between the incident light and the direction. Of scattered light, but we don't need to uh, need to worry about uh, these types of aspects of, of Thomson scattering at this point. Um, uh, I will encourage you to go to this Wikipedia, Wikipedia article and, and learn more about the, the the more detailed, for example, more detailed mathematical aspects of of this physical process. So let's go back to the uh, big picture. Um, so now we have the sun that emits electromagnetic radiation. Uh, uh, that electromagnetic radiation uh, hits the, the electrons contained by the coronal mass ejection, and that causes Thomson scattering of this incident light, and that scattered light then uh, is, is seen uh, uh, throughout, uh, basically throughout uh, the, the heliosphere. Now, uh, how do we observe uh, that scattered light? Well, that's where the other coronagraphs come into the play. So what we'll do here is, is uh, we'll draw uh, an eye here on the sky, and this is this is now our uh, observer. Let's call this this observer. Observer, like that. Okay. But now uh, one problem here uh, uh, is that the sun, the solar disk, is much much brighter. Than, uh, than the uh, the coronal mass ejection, meaning that there is much more uh, light coming from the sun than there is uh, light coming from from uh, from this uh, Thomson scattering process. So what needs to happen here is that need, you need to actually block the uh, the extra light coming from the sun with some kind of a device. And that device we will uh, we we call uh, occulter, like this. There you go. So what happens with the uh, the occulter is that uh, <clears throat> now of course the uh, the light coming directly. Uh, Uh, coming from the sun will hit the occulter and and, and will not uh, propagate all the way to the observer. However, if the, the occulter is thin enough, it will allow the electromagnetic radiation coming from the, uh, the coronal mass ejection uh, pass it so that the observer can uh, and can see can actually see the cloud. And this is the, the sort of the basic fundamental principle behind coronagraphs. You need some type of uh, arrangement 
where you can block the uh, the bright uh, solar disk so that you can actually see the the much much uh, dimmer structures in the uh, the uh, in the solar corona uh, and one of those structures of course now being coronal mass ejections um, a little more in detail uh, how these uh, coronagraphs look like let's take a look at this article here uh, this is the uh, uh, basic article describing uh, uh, the uh, the LASCO instrument. This is paper by Bruckner et al. Uh, this appeared in jo Solar Physics Journal in 1995. So uh, please get this paper if, if you want to read more in details. But what is important from our viewpoint is, is just the, uh, the the sort of a basic description of the other C C3 chronograph that we will be uh, looking at more in detail in, in the, uh, the other tutorials that uh, will follow this one. So here's the uh, picture of uh, LASCO C3 instrument. Uh, it's the other, the other tube. Uh, the length of the tube is, is uh, uh, 890 millimeters, so it's a, a little bit less than one meter long. And, and here is a, a graphical illustration of the, the primary components uh, of the instrument. So here is the, the top of the instrument, uh, uh, this part here, uh, that is uh, pointed towards the sun. So here, this is where the uh, the, uh, this, the opening of the coronagraph, and here is where the uh, the, uh, the light coming from the coronum uh, enters the instrument. Then there are of course a number of different types of uh, optical arrangements, uh, complex uh, optical arrangements within the, the instrument. But we have also the occulting discs here. Here's the first layer of occulting discs in LASCO C3 instrument and in LASCO C3 instrument you have also then additional occulter here in the, uh, the midsection uh, of the instrument. And these are now the, uh, the occulter or occulting discs that block uh, the light coming uh, from, from that bright solar disk and enables us to see these much much uh, dimmer structures in the uh, uh, in the uh, the corona and now uh, the wavelengths that I use to to observe the corona uh, for LASCO C3 for example uh, are very between 400 and 850, uh, 850 nan uh, nanometers uh, which falls within uh, uh, the uh, the visible spectrum within the, the spectrum uh, that, that for example where for example human eye can, can detect uh, electromagnetic radiation and that's why we call uh, this uh, uh, instrument a white light coronagraph. It observes the solar corona in the uh, electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic radiation spectrum portion that, that, that uh, also human eye can see. So, uh, in a short summary, uh, what happens here is that uh, uh, we have the Sun uh, the solar surface, uh, the photosphere, emits uh, 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 electromagnetic radiation. That electromagnetic radiation is then Thomson scattered from the free electrons contained um, by the coronal mass ejections. Then we have uh, an observer that has a coronagraph, and in the coronagraph you have the occulter, occulting disk that blocks uh, the bright, very bright light coming from the solar disk and enables us to observe the dimmer structures in the, the solar corona and that's uh, how you uh, obtain uh, for example imagery like uh, this one seen here uh, uh, so this is the LASCO C3 image uh, the solar disk is shown here with this uh, 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 white uh, uh, line here uh, the dimensions are here the inner boundary uh, of the instrument uh, the, the field of view of the instrument is 3.7 solar radii and the, the outer boundary here is, is uh, 30 solar radii. So, and if I start the moving mode uh, in, in the integrated space with the analysis system for for this uh, for this event, uh, you can then actually see uh, the the sort of a temporal evolution of this bright structure here, which is now coronal mass ejection as imaged. Uh, by the LASCO C3 instrument. And the, uh, the bright structures here, of course, uh, now as we learned, are nothing more than uh, the electromagnetic radiation uh, the, uh, originating from the solar photosphere, and, and which is then Thomson scattered uh, from the free electrons contained by the coronal mass ejection, and then uh, captured later on by the other coronagraph instrument. 
and this ends uh, uh, this tutorial.